Kiriai Kodomine. Kiriai Kodomine, Kodomine Kiriai, is the master of assassin in the fourth Fuyuki Holy Grail War of Fate slash Zero. He later forms a contract with Archer after assassin's defeat. This contract persists into the fifth Fuyuki Holy Grail War of Fate slash Day Night, where he is also appointed overseer of the Holy Grail War and forcibly takes the contract of Lancer after dealing a fatal wound to his master, Bazette Fragamakrimitz. While he is supposed to be an impartial mediator, he works in the background of the Holy Grail War to meet his own goals. He is a main character of Fate Slash Zero and a major antagonist of Fate Slash Stay Night. Kiriai Kodomine was born December 28, 1967 as the son of Risei Kodomine, who was gifted with Kiriai on a pilgrimage. Kiriai is a word of prayer, so Risei named him such so that he would be pure and beautiful. He grew up according to Risei's expectations, showing morals and good sense from a young age, and was insightful enough to seem precocious to others. He has been actively involved with the church since his youth, and he often accompanied his father to the holy grounds. He worked diligently as an executor in training from an early age, and he was once chosen as an executor around the age of 10. While he understood that he was living up to his father's expectations, he did not love his father. It was unrelated to having to meet expectations, and he grew up healthy. The problem was an intrinsic one, that he did not understand his father's notion of beauty. He finally realized the inconsistency one morning, and wondered why it took him so long to figure it out. He simply woke up, raised his head, and knew at that moment that, while his father wished for him to be beautiful, he had always questioned why he had never thought the same of which that Risei had thought was beautiful. Understanding that he was not in accordance with the world, he worked hard to correct this mistake, attempting to be pure and beautiful. All throughout his teenage years, he did everything he could to overcome his defect after accepting its existence. He suffered agony, though he never knew if it truly was agony, trying to pursue something he lacked from the start. Following that he, as a sinner by nature, should punish himself following the morals in which he believed to keep balance in the world, he tried methods like shaving away the skin, ripping off flesh, and dislocating bones. Rather than surrendering himself to his condition by indulging in twisted pleasure, he tried looking within his own body for what could not be found in his mind, attempted to use mental pain, which is more significant than physical pain for missionaries, and attempted to abstain from eating during their pious acts. After ten years of such things, all of his purgatories and sufferings were useless to change him. Unable to reach an epiphany, he arrived at the single conclusion that he did not have the sense to feel normal happiness. He turned to religion with fervor to turn himself into a normal person, believing that God may eventually bring him salvation. The path that became his creed was to become a priest and preach like his father. It is said that God forgives everything, so he should also save someone who is not born with it. The result for him was tragic, as he abode by the rules of God, followed the law, and lived modestly with no results. He could not find greater pleasure than the pain of others, and while the church's teachings forbid immorality, immorality was all he had at the time. There was no anguish at this realization because had always sought after something that never existed. There was nothing lost, so there was nothing to grieve. He was only concerned about the why behind himself as he matured. He wondered about the nature of his existence, that if the world hates evil, what was the purpose of something that was never wanted being given life? Those with a deficiency should not be born, yet there are beings that exist to be hated and die. He wished to know the crime of his existence, the simple, pure question of why, and held a feeling of anger towards something unknown behind his reward of years of anguish and blind devotion not being salvation. He attended the Theological College of Manresa St. Ignacio where he skipped two grades and acted as the student council president. He graduated in 1981, and while he could have become a cardinal minister with his background, he focused on the inside of the church. He entered the seminary at the age of 22, and in the same year received a second baptism to graduate from a trainee to a full executor who could operate independently. During his time there, he transferred three times to different departments, and eventually ended up in the assembly of the Eighth Sacrament with his father. Due to his twisted nature, he wished to have a family in an attempt to gain a normal sense of self. After all his attempts, his final chance was a woman, believing that every human wishes to love one of the opposite sex, have a family, and die peacefully. He was no exception, but he wished for it while feeling no true fascination for it. He eventually met and married Claudia Hortensia while still performing his duty of judging heretics. He then voluntarily left his position in the seminary, and abandoned the path of becoming an official priest. The woman he chose was one with no future, as she was terminally ill with only a few years left to live. He doesn't know if he chose her because of that or if that had been his only choice. 
he tried loving her in order to earn happiness, and she truly did love him, and even bore his child, Karen Hortensia. Their time together only lasted for two years, and it was unable to change him. He derived happiness from her suffering and their daughter's despair, and the more he tried to love, the more their suffering saved him. This didn't cause him to suffer, and he still doesn't know if he did ever suffer. The only thing he does know is that the more she tried to cure him, the more he wanted to see her grieve. He holds that, even if she was sickly, she was a saint to him. Her faithfulness and how deeply she understood his anger need not be questioned. The degree with which she understood him and tried to heal him is beyond any other human, but she could still not fill the void within him. Filled with despair at this fact, he concluded that his birth and existence were some kind of mistake, so it was best to disappear. He went to bid her goodbye before he was to die, as it was a natural duty to tell her, whom he made his wife as an experiment, of his end. Entering her room where she was dying, composed of only skin and bones, he relayed the simple fact, I could not love you. With her final attempt to prove to him that he could love and that he deserved to live, she took her own life after responding, no. You do love me. Believing that her death would bring sadness to him, she was happy to see that he was crying and smiled at him before finally passing away. That was only the way she saw it, and rather than crying for her death, he was instead sad over losing the chance of killing her himself and enjoying her death. He silently left the room and ceased pursuing salvation altogether. Their daughter was placed in the custody of her mother's relatives. Rather than killing himself, he worked for the assembly of the Eighth Sacrament, concentrating on training as an executor. At night a few days later, three years before the Fourth Holy Grail War, he discovered the surfacing pattern of his command spells. Upon consulting his father, Risei immediately took him to Turin to meet Tokiomi Tosaka the next morning. Even if he was unable to understand why he was selected, as he lacked any sense of purpose, ideal or aspiration, Kiriai was instructed by his father to be temporarily transferred from the Holy Church to the Magi's Association and train under the tutelage of Tokiomi Tosaka. He became acquainted with his family during this time, and he was disliked by Tokiomi's daughter, Rin Tosaka. Appearance Kiriai wears simple vestments and a golden cross around his neck during the Fourth Holy Grail War, and he wears a cassock as of the Fifth Holy Grail War. Participating in the Fourth Holy Grail War at the age of 28. He is noted to be rather tall, standing at 185 centimeters in his mid-twenties, and experiencing an unnatural 8 centimeter growth spurt to 193 centimeters after the Fourth Holy Grail War for an unknown reason. Personality Unknown to all those around him, Kiriai was born defective, possessing a warped mind since birth. He is an evil person, but not a villain. He is deviant, but not inhuman. Despite his personal accomplishments, he never felt satisfaction. Despite his best efforts he could not enjoy what other people found happiness in, and instead found himself drawn to negative emotions like the pain of others. He is able to act like a normal person, even bringing pride to his father, but he intrinsically does not feel the same happiness others do. He is very similar to Shiro in that he is a void human being without a clear sense of self, and can be called the opposite extreme of Shiro. If Archer is a light embossing of Shiro's defects, then Kotomine could be said to be the wall exposing those defects by darkness. He also pursued Kiritsugu fervently, mistakenly believing that Kiritsugu possessed the same hollowness. Abilities Kiriai's talents qualify him both as an executor in the service of the Holy Church Executor and a Magus who specializes in healing. His title of Executor inherently signifies that he is an elite killer who has successfully completed brutal and pious training to become mankind's weapon. However, his skills as a first-class executor still cannot match the seventh of the burial agency under normal conditions. While still capable of displaying superhuman feats of strength and agility by the time of the Fifth Grail War, he has not gotten stronger with age and is substantially weaker than Bazet Frogamacrimits in terms of pure strength without the assistance of weapons or magecraft. However, if one were to compare Bazet with Kiriai at his peak ten years before, the brightest moment of his life, he would be the physically superior fighter overall. His combat ability in at his peak is extremely strong when counting his abnormally large number of command spells, utilizing one or two at a time putting his physical ability equal to that of a dead apostle, and tenacity towards Kiritsugu, so he could even win against Seal at that time. The state could also allow him to defeat a servant under limited conditions. The only ones he could readily defeat would be those who lack physical power like an assassin after having been revealed or a caster in close combat. Defeating those that specialize in hand-to-hand -hand combat would require a special condition in his favor like surprise or suitability against the opponent. Combat Kiriai is a skilled executor, 
who has become a combat expert with over 10 years of experiences in killing magi. He has experience hunting many strange magi and has fought countless numbers to the death, so he is used to facing enemies beyond common sense. Even though Rin is stronger, he would counter her talents in battle because of his experience. As he knows her, he would win against her 80% of the time due to having knowledge of her past traumatic experiences. He excels at opening up the trauma of the enemy, and as it is not easy for humans to conquer trauma printed into them, having such experiences probed would make her unable to take advantage of her true potential. He is extremely strong, allowing him to gather all his strength to jump 10 meters up and grab a person out of a tree by the head before they can react, all in an instant. Due to his strength, his muscles are trained to the point where they go far beyond what would overpower a normal person in theory. He can easily fall 20 meters while carrying a small girl and land without any issue. He can run 50 kilometers per hour in a forest with uneven terrain while carrying a small girl without reinforcing himself with magecraft, and he does not display any tiredness at all, compared to Shiro being barely able to keep up even when reinforced by Archer's arm to a large degree. He is skilled at free climbing, comparing climbing four stories of a building as easy as walking down the street compared to something like a wall of ice. He is used to facing firearms and skilled enough to judge the type of bullets by the sound of gunfire. Even veterans of many battles can lose morale and judgment capabilities when surprised by a machine gun, but he is able to analyze the situation calmly because such events are mere exceptions to executors. He can quickly make judgments on his battle strategy depending on if he is facing a type of gun he can handle or something more dangerous to him like a sniper rifle, and he can sense killing intent to identify targets. He is ruthless and determined even when cornered, and with his hands bound, he simply rushes forward to utilize a kick to decide the battle. He is not like dead apostles who are able to dodge a bullet after it has been fired, so he has to predict the shooter's thoughts, killing intent, and preparatory actions and act beforehand. With extremely quick evasive actions, he moves at the moment the enemy fires to effectively dodge the bullets. He utilizes his bulletproof frock, made from thick Kevlar filaments and covered seamlessly with the church's special protection spells, to deal with smaller firearms. 9mm caliber pistol rounds cannot pierce it even at close range, but powerful weapons like the Thompson Contender will pierce it easily. He is free to charge at someone openly firing by covering his head with his arms and not bother with dodging. Bullets still have an extremely powerful impact, but his well-trained musculature acts like a sort of armor that protects his organs and bones and keeps him from staggering against a hail of bullets. Kevlar protects against gunshots, but he is forced to protect himself against knives because Kevlar is vulnerable to being cut by a sharp blade. Kodamine fights against Assassin in the Heaven's Feel route, but it is not a true battle. While 10 black keys and one of his command spells left over after removing most of the crest worms from Sakura would be more than enough for a low-ranking spirit, he could not kill a servant even if he managed to make successful strikes with all of them. He does believe that having a weapon on the scripture scale could potentially allow him to defeat a heroic spirit. Though Assassin's Dirks are only meant to judge an opponent's skill until he can make use of Zabaniya to land a fatal strike, all 23 are still thrown with the intent to kill, so Assassin sees Kodamine's skill in being able to block and avoid them for such a long period as admirable. Kodamine, having seen Assassin fight Lancer, knows of this strategy and uses it against Assassin. Due to the unique nature of his heart, Zabaniya is unable to kill him, and Assassin is instead bound to a tree by the Black Keys. It is the equivalent of a scratch to him, but the Holy Nails keep him from saving Zoken. While he cannot directly fight against servants, he claims that he can harm servants without masters with his baptism rite, so Assassin backs off afterwards. Bajikwen Kiriai is a practitioner of a type of Bajikwen that Gen Yurobuchi calls Super Bajikwen. It is an ultimate technique born from the miraculous fusion of Bajikwen and Magecraft, having become an internal art that transcends the external art. It is a reckless attack belonging solely to Kiriai, whose self-destructive fighting style against Kiritsugu even enables him to sacrifice an arm. Kiriai only had black keys for their battle in the design stage of Fate Slash Zero, while Kiritsugu had firearms, Magecraft such as Innate Time Control, and Avalon, so Yurobuchi needed something to even their arsenals. There was only Bajikwen so he studied a number of reference materials to reach the realm of amazing kung fu, truly amazing kung fu. The end result was a form of somewhat random bajikwen, so it cannot be compared to real bajikwen. It is a style that takes the shortest route without any initial movement to damage the inside instead of the outside. He is an expert capable of defeating a normal person with a single hit, but claims that it is a mimicry of Taolu without much behind it. Even against Shiro's body of swords, it damages him inside rather than outside, allowing the impacts to pierce through him. One combination, six grand opening, elbow upthrust, 
involves grabbing the opponent's arm from below, carrying it up while also pressing his side close to the opponent's waist and simultaneously delivering a blow to the heart with his left elbow and a strike from his left foot to the supporting leg, all in an instant to combine offense and defense. He is able to break apart a tree without utilizing his arms because his strength as a martial arts master is not only produced from the wrist. It would seem that his hands are his main weapon, but the level of Kiriai's training makes his entire body a weapon. Being bound does not leave him helpless as long as he can plant both feet on the ground. Everything to the strength of his feet on the ground, the turning of his back, and the twisting of his shoulders attributes to releasing an instantaneous burst of power into his fists. The strength of the arms is insignificant in comparison to the power of the whole body to someone experienced with the phenomenon. It is possible to press a fist next to the target and strike only with the force coming from outside of the arm. With this, explosive force, technique, just having the back of his hands against the tree trunk allows him to utilize the full power of his body to strike, and using his full power three times is enough to cause the 30 centimeter trunk to collapse. He relies on the moving stance, a dangerous secret of Bajikwan, to advance towards the enemy by sneaking with a sight step, and without announcing its speed, shorten the distance. Moving a foot and hooking one of enemy's legs from the inside is a move known as the locking stance. The eight grand openings, the standing upward cannon, is a heavy upper hook that would shatter the opponent's skull. The eight postures of the Buddha guards style allows for a punch to have the power to reach infinity in all eight directions after reaching Bajikwan's optimum distance. Slamming his foot to floor as he steps forward, he unleashes a heavy punch that sends a person flying back and kills the opponent after easily crushing their heart and lungs. Kiritsugu is only able to survive through the regeneration of Avalon. He has mastered hearing a move, a concept that a martial artist reaches a certain state where they no longer need eyesight to detect the enemy's movement. He can predict the opponent's next move purely on the brief moment when his arm blocks that of his opponent, meaning that having a blind spot or having an enemy too fast for the human eye to see is not a problem. Even with blood affecting his right eye, having use of only his left arm, and having Kiritsugu moving three times human speed, he is able to block all of Kiritsugu's strikes without issue. Humans would only see the lighting-like residual images Kiritsugu's dagger leaves in its wake, but his left arm can defend as if it can see every swing. His skills make him someone who will not be at a disadvantage even when put under the duress of speed. Black Keys Kiriai is extremely skilled with black keys, thin blades resembling a rapier that are longer than a meter with a short hilt. They are used specifically by executors as projectile weapons. They boast great power and a high difficulty to master, so Kiriai is a strong and rare expert at utilizing them in battle. The blade is a semi-solid formed by magical energy, so it is only necessary to carry the small hilt. He holds a high number of them at one time under his frock, and nobody knows their exact number. It is a sacrament rather than magecraft that is utilized to fight spirits, so it can affect a servant should one somehow hit them. They lack balance in close combat, making them unwieldy to defend against a smaller weapon like a dagger, so he instead relies on his bajikwan under such circumstances. For black keys in a single hand is his limit. He can complete a single throw and any necessary preparatory movements in 0.3 seconds, and he can perform four separate throws in 0.7 seconds. With his skill, he is able to simultaneously throw one while also avoiding an attack with extreme accuracy. He can also throw accurately from a face-down position on the ground. He is able to maintain a 100% striking accuracy even against unconfirmed targets. While it is hand-tossed, it boasts enough power to penetrate reinforced concrete and iron. They can also be used to trap an opponent for a bajikwan strike by throwing four into the air to surround the opponent like a cage and seal the their movement by striking them wherever they could dodge. During his fight against True Assassin in the Heaven's Feel route, Kiriai is shown to be able to telekinetically control his black keys using the incantation set, similar to his adoptive brother in the world of fate slash apocrypha, as well as place enchantments on them that can paralyze opponents. This paralysis is strong enough to seal True Assassin's movements with a single black key. And Grimanyu. Kiriai, after having his heart shot by Kiritsugu, was revived by the black mud from the grail that washed over Gilgamesh. While it had not been able to fully corrupt Gilgamesh, it instead followed the path of the magical energy supply that had linked him to his master, arriving at Kiriai's physical body. It healed the wound, leaving no visible scar from the bullet, and became a source of life force supply that was able to substitute for a heart. Connected to the grail, he now relies on the magical energy of Ingra Menu in order to live. Simply feeling Kiriai grasp his head makes Shiro able to sense that Kiriai has swallowed black corruption that reaches in from the outside world to bind him like a chain. 
he is surrounded by an unknown darkness that maintains his corpse-like body. Its nature does not make him any more resistant to being slain by others. Shiro is able to kill him with the Azoth sword, and Lancer manages to land a fatal strike through the heart. He is also able to be tired out even with its unique nature. It is strong against evil curses that punish humans, as they cannot curse one of their own kind. He is able to completely resist Zabaniya, Delusional Heartbeat, the Arm of Shane, which only gives an empty response upon creating the fake heart. Due to his corruption, he is able to interact with the mud with no negative consequences, and he is shown to be able to control it when a connection to the grail has been established. The nature of the mud is a curse so strong that it is visible, so it can be called magical energy specialized for destroying people. It cannot be used practically in any way, as it cannot be reshaped or anything of the sort. It stains anybody it touches with a strong curse and melts them as if they were being digested. The pain and fear felt before death remains as magical energy and becomes the next curse to seek out living people. It will kill anyone it touches unless they can remove it from their body before they are melted away. Without any movement, he can extend a number of whip-like tentacles of mud capable of stretching without limit and clearly leave burning marks on the ground. It has a range greater than 10 meters and reacts sensitively to living beings. It is slow enough that Shiro can react to the attacks fairly easily, and as it can only strike where it is aimed, it is easy to dodge. That only accounts for a single tentacle, so one can be easily overwhelmed by their numbers and those that attack from behind while he is dodging. The overwhelming attacks cause Shiro to slowly be covered in mud, which causes those areas to become numb and start to melt his body away. Areas that turn completely black can no longer move or feel any sensation, including pain. While he can force the mud out of his body or push magical energy into the limb to move the clotted blood, the effect upon moving the limb is the destruction of his muscles. Kiriai can completely submerge someone in the curse by dousing his hand in the mud and unleashing a black darkness, a swarm of grain-sized curses, upon the target. It is a curse that paints space itself, surrounding them in darkness and imprinting hell upon their brain by showing them unseeable darkness, ugliness that can't be acknowledged, and all the crimes of the people in the world that make them want to run away from it all. Those trapped with the darkness will eat themselves to death from pain and hatred, and they will be swallowed by it like the painted space. Avoiding such a curse and the very concept of blocking it are nearly impossible. Escaping should be impossible, so Kiriai is astonished that Shiro manages to do just that through only willpower. He is able to immediately trap Shiro once again, and if not for Avalon, he would have been completely swallowed. Before the curse can melt Shiro's mind, Avalon disperses both the darkness around and inside him. After Sakura Matu completely succumbs to the corruption of Ngramenu in the Heaven's Feel scenario, she is able to control the magical energy given to Kiriai. Their connection allows her, as Ngramenu, to squash his organs and pull out his insides no matter how far he runs. She claims that his life is under her control no matter his location simply due to the overall minuscule amount of energy she is providing him to live. She can destroy his heart instantly without any movement, and just lightly grasping her fingers together causes his body to be crushed and squeezed like a rag. He is left alive from an interruption caused by Shiro's defeat of Berserker, but without his heart, it is a limited life with a set time limit. He eventually appears before Shiro in order to stop him from destroying the Grail. They both only have minutes to live at this point, as both their bodies are quickly dying. He no longer has a heartbeat, and there is only a black stain where it had previously been. His death is inevitable even without any action, and he has no magical energy in his body. He's only left with the ability to use his fists in a brawl to the death without technique or strategy. When he is about to win, his body fails him, only due to a difference in time. He had become half-dead slightly before Shiro, so that difference cost him his victory. Magecraft Kiriai was born with magic circuits despite having a non-magus lineage. Normal lineages rarely acquire magic circuits, and such cases of a normal person being born with them are sudden mutations. Kiriai is not of this type, but instead his circuits were a gift from the divine sacrament. They were a reward to his father's years of pious worship, thus Kiriai was born with the right to recreate the miracles in the divine sacrament, with the right being the magic circuits. Also unlike typical families that pass down circuits in their genetics, Karen did not inherit them. While he is thought to love destruction, he is a creator type of magus like Shiro. His magic circuits are noted to have yet to develop properly as of the time of the fourth war, so he instead makes use of command spells. Ever since he first began his tutelage in magecraft under Tokiomi Tosaka, he has not advanced beyond the degree of beginner, and he cannot reach the first-rate level no matter his efforts. During his training with Tokiomi, 
he studied alchemy, spiritual evocation, summoning, divination, necromancy and spiritual healing. The only area where he displayed a natural talent was spiritual healing in which he ultimately became more skilled than even his master after three years. During battle, his most adept skill is physical enhancement to exert greater physical strength. While Rin is considered his student, he is vastly inferior to her. While he is not a genius, just a normal man, he is able to achieve quick results through complete and total effort, putting in 10 to 20 times the effort of other people. He stops short of the last step, throwing all previous labor out like trash. In the ufotable film adaptations of the Heaven's Feel route, he is shown being capable of using lightning magecraft in as an attack against true assassin, channeling it through the black keys to paralyze his movements. Servant Contracts While Kiriai holds simultaneous contracts with both Lancer and Gilgamesh, he is not capable of supplying sufficient energy for both, nor was he able to provide energy for Gilgamesh during the 10-year period between the wars. He can still handle a single servant with his own abilities, but Lancer's backup from his master is lacking compared to others, and like other insufficient masters, his contract with Gilgamesh lowers several of Gilgamesh's attributes. It is impossible for most masters to sustain a servant outside of the Holy Grail War because the support from the power of the Grail reduces much of the burden that supplying magical energy for the servant would cause. Kiriai had to make up for his lack of energy with knowledge, and Gilgamesh calls Kiriai's innovation exceptional in that regard. Kiriai gathered the orphans left by the fire in the church under the pretense of using it as an orphanage. Through unknown means, he managed to erase their existence and seal them within the basement of the church. He attached them to coffins without their knowledge, and through an unknown process, the coffins began to leech away at both their nutrition, magical energy, and their very souls with enough force to keep them from living but slow enough to keep them from dying. Their energy was given to Gilgamesh, while their bodies slowly began to rot away despite the fact that they were still alive. While Gilgamesh accepted it, he did not actually require it, as his incarnation would have allowed him to sustain himself. Their bodies have been reduced to the state of living corpses that retain little of their human form. They no longer have their limbs, some of which have been cut off, some that have decomposed ends that leave only the bones, and those who have been ground down into the cracks or splattered on the wall. Their skin is peeled off, and their remaining flesh is rotting, leaving their faces to look like preserved specimens from a lab. They can no longer speak through their decayed throats, but still cry out with inaudible voices with all their might. While they no longer have their original appearances, Shiro is still able to identify them from the short time they spent together. As of the time of the Fifth Holy Grail War, he plans to close it up due to the fruition of their plans coming into effect. Due to the state of their bodies, he would no longer be able to extract the same amount of soul as when he first established the practice, and there is no longer need for more food after that point. Spiritual Healing Kiriai is a spiritual doctor, Rabbi Ishii, that heals through a spiritual medium, as in healing through the soul rather than the flesh. It is a curse that can remove the infected part without using a single surgical knife on the body. While he has practiced many different types of magecraft, healing is the only one that fit him because his magical aptitude is specialized in opening wounds. Kiriai abilities in fixing spiritual and mental bodies is at bishop level, and Rin comments that people at his level in the mages association are few and that there are also few people in the church able to handle spirits at his level. It is known as an unusual practice only utilized in uncivilized areas, and it is especially uncommon for a man of the church to utilize it. He is able to use this knowledge to extract command spells from the nervous system through the spiritual body rather than physically. Taking Shiro's left arm, he gets the feeling that Kiriai has ripped it off. He realizes it was an illusion, but then sees fingers entering his arm. They are Kiriai's fingers, transparent like a ghost, moving through his flesh, and after intense pain, he is left without any wounds. This action removes two strokes of the command spell, leaving only the pain. Despite this, he still cuts off Bazette's arm to obtain her command spells. He is able to purify the poison given to Sakura to make her crest worms go out of control. He is able to perform surgery to call back her lost magical energy and mind, but the chances of success are very low. Removing the worms requires a miracle or the holy grail due to the integration into her magic circuits. It requires the use of the majority of his command spells to remove them, and even that is not enough to completely purge her body. He can only remove those that have not metabolized with her nerves, as doing more would require removing her heart and killing her. It is only a temporary fix that will only last until the worms activate again. While the technique is useful, the spirit is only contact treatment relying on the body, so it is nothing like a miracle that would allow connection with the soul, the proof of existence independent of the body. 
he attaches the arm of Archer to Shiro, but that is not something normally possible. Joining two separate spiritual bodies is close to the realm of resurrection and restoration of souls, which requires magic to handle. It should only be possible to succeed in shape, only for the recipient to die of shock. The only reason it is a success is due to Shiro and Archer being the same person. Baptism right. I will kill. I will let live. I will harm and heal. None will escape me. None will escape my sight. Be crushed. I welcome those who have grown old and those who have lost. Devote yourself to me, learn from me, and obey me. Rest. Do not forget song, do not forget prayer, and do not forget me. I am light and relieve you of all your burdens. Do not pretend. Retribution for forgiveness, betrayal for trust, despair for hope, darkness for light, dark death for the living. Relief is in my hands. I will add oil to your sins and leave a mark. Eternal life is given through death. Ask for forgiveness here. I, the Incarnation, will swear. Kairi Alei-san. The baptism rite, Senrei Aishu, is the sole magical miracle that is permitted to be learned in the Church. The teachings of God are considered to be the greatest weapon against spirits within the systematic basis of their magecraft, so the chant is a key of providence that eliminates wandering souls with the holy words of the Bible. It is the purification and elevating of a wayward soul through the teachings of the Lord by sending a ghost to its throne. It is a miracle that has healed the hearts of many, so that is most likely the reason that it is the theory of thaumaturgy with the most widespread theory. The first line of the rite is based on Deuteronomy 32 verse 39 of the Old Testament, being almost identical. It is a simple ritual, a ten-count type, effective immediately after it has been spoken. Its physical interference is somewhat weak, but it has absolute power against spiritual bodies. His attack power against spiritual bodies is superb and, while twisted, represents the unshakingness of his faith. The exorcism instantly sublimates Zokan Matu and disperses his spiritual body due to being a wraith that uses worms to tamper with the world. Damaging his body normally would do nothing unless it can be completely eliminated, so a direct attack to the spirit is extremely effective. It does not actually kill him because the body destroyed is only a collection of worms. His actual body, a small worm next to Sakura Matu's heart, contains his soul, so even Kiriai's words cannot kill him unless that main body is destroyed. It is enough to make him unable to act unless he were to go find another body to devour. It is not sufficient to send back or affect entities like servants with a connection with a master, but it is different once they no longer have an active source of magical energy. His holy words can affect such servants because they can be considered no different than the wandering spirits of the Einsburn forest. Command Spells During the Fourth Holy Grail War, Kiriai is granted three command seals by the Grail, and though he loses them after Assassin is defeated, new seals are granted to him upon the Grail once again deeming him worthy of participation. It is unprecedented among the past participants of the previous Holy Grail Wars, as he is not a member of the three founding families, and all six other masters still live and all six other servants still have their contracts. During the Fifth Holy Grail War, he steals Bazette Fraga Macrimit's command seals by cutting off her arm, allowing Lancer the chance to contract with him. While he uses them to command Assassin and Lancer, he is opposed to using even a single command seal on Gilgamesh. It would only bring about the opposite result to force a man with such a huge ego to serve another's will, so he finds the best way to control him is to treat him as if he were an environmental condition rather than a pawn. The weather or direction of the wind cannot be controlled by a sailor, but he can dexterously control his boat using the sail. Differing from other magi who treat servants like tools and familiars, he treats Gilgamesh like an accomplice with mutual interests. He does ask Gilgamesh for the right to summon him with a command spell to protect him from enemy servants during the final battle of the Fourth War, to which Gilgamesh agrees. In addition to his own command seals on his lower left arm, he also has command seals inherited from his father that cover his right arm from the elbow to the wrist. The supervisor of the Holy Grail War is entrusted with the command seals recollected from previous Holy Grail Wars, so he has access to a great number of them. Using them as the supervisor, he is able to transfer the command seals by taking the master's hand, chanting a spell, and tracing the mark of the command seals with his own hand in order to renew them. He lies to Rin about their true nature by calling them a magical crest inherited from his father. He says that unlike her permanent crest, his is a consumption type that fades away with use due to not actually being from a lineage of magi, instead calling it a lower rank command spell. While normally only used to strengthen or restrain servants, they can be used and forged into highly practical magical energy that has no alignments. 
he, as someone with no magic crest, can utilize them to perform magecraft upon paying the proper price. In a more efficient manner than trying to control Gilgamesh, he can use them to gain a high chance of victory even against an expert magus. Using them as mock magic crests, apart from the fact that they are limited and expendable, the magecraft utilized by him is enough to rival famous magecraft houses that have collected their crests through generations. Due to their nature as one-use crests, they naturally counter Kiritsugu's origin bullets by disappearing instead of destroying Kiriai's own magic circuits. He mainly utilizes them to reinforce his own body and equipment to a great extent. He surges magical energy into six black keys, causing them to expand to twice their size. Due to the amount of magical energy being forced into them, it seems the forceful execution of the spell surpasses the limits of the blades themselves. While they are able to easily neutralize the force behind Kiritsugu's first origin bullet, they shatter under the heavy load of magical energy. He also utilizes his own body to deflect the second origin bullet in a movement that Kiritsugu feels would require extreme willpower. Turning his own body into a lethal weapon, he reinforces his physical abilities to match the bullet. He accelerates his reaction time, multiplies the maximum power output of his right flexor, radius muscle, and pronator teres, and shows the capability to reinforce his bulletproof frock, but lacks the time to accomplish it in that moment. He uses a defensive Baji Kwan skill normally used to nullify an opponent's strike that, when used by his arm that has been transformed into a lethal magecraft mystic code, causes a spiral to form in the air. It becomes a spiral of force that roars like a tornado with the power of two command seals infused into it. The martial arts move, performed at divine speed, catches the bullet traveling at 2,500 inches per second, but it is unable to completely deflect it. It still manages to tear at his Kevlar sleeve and hit his reinforced arm without being turned. As it is forced to bend to the power of the magecraft in his body, the supernatural phenomenon of the clash sounds like two millstones impacting, the scattering sparks seem to distort the laws of physics, and the approximately 3,000 pound per inch kinetic energy of the bullet is forced off at an angle. Due to his unskilled method, he used too much magical energy and overly strengthened his arm with the magecraft, so his right arm ended up greatly wounded. While he only uses his remaining command spells to remove the crest worms from Sakura during Heaven's Feel, the original plan was to have him use 10 of them in order to defeat Zoken and Assassin. Even a human can damage a heroic spirit by using that many, but the idea was dropped in favor of having Assassin get caught off guard after using Zabaniya. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.